Um, Ryan, would you like a, to give a short introduction by yourself, like how yeah. you got into tattooing and all of that? Yeah. Um, so I, I'm 35 now. I started like really tattooing when I was 21. Um, but I was working in tattoo shops since I was 19. So I was a body piercer for a couple of years and didn't really have any one person uh, that either wanted to teach me or that I wanted to learn from. But I did learn a lot, obviously, watching artists. I already had the medical, uh, you know, cleanliness side down from doing body piercing. And um, yeah, I mean, I had a couple of friends show me, sit with me and, and help me out. Uh, and a lot of it was self-taught, actually, to be honest. Um, it was it's always been hard to get a good apprenticeship. And I even hear people getting apprenticeships and they're like sometimes almost more damaging than than they are good. So. Yeah, I ended up teaching myself a lot and um and yeah, you know, almost 14 years. I think uh next month September will be 14 years of tattooing. Yeah. I think I mean, when it comes to apprenticeships, it's kind of like having a kid, isn't it? So I think that this sounds harsh to say, but not everybody should have kids because I know people that are yeah. really not capable to take care of themselves. So, you know, let, let alone another human being. So I think with, uh, with apprenticeship, I, I hear this with, uh, from a lot of younger artists that I talked to and, and some of them had crazy <laughs> toxic uh, experiences. You know, you're like, oh, maybe that person wouldn't be very qualified to pass knowledge into anyone, uh, anybody else, you know, but. Yeah. And just because you're a great tattooer doesn't mean you're going to be a great teacher. You know, that's a big part of it. Um, I actually really enjoy teaching, whether I'm teaching, you know, financial stuff or tattooing. I, I've had several apprentices um, and it's been a great experience. It's helped me, you know, really think about why I do the things the way I do them. And around year eight of tattooing is when I took on my first apprentice. And I think it actually helped me grow as a tattoo artist to uh, not only, uh, you know, just not only do what I do, but think about why I do them and then explain that in a way where someone else can can learn from that. Yeah, yeah. I, I never had an apprentice so far myself, um, but I, I'm, I see this from the seminars, the painting seminars that I do. The fact that, I can't remember who said this, that you really know or really learn about something when you teach it because you had to have it down so well into your head in order yeah. to, for someone else to understand it. They have no knowledge about it. So it's such a, such a cool journey isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You have to have a system for each and every piece because once you learn the system, like once you learn the rules, then you can break them, but you have to learn the foundation. And then you, that's what I teach is I teach the foundation to my apprentice, even just how you hold a tattoo machine. I've taught experienced tattooers how to hold the tattoo machine differently and it changed their whole game. So each and every piece of tattooing is, I would say that the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So the way you sweep the floor and mop the floor at the tattoo studio has a lot to do with how you pull lines and how you approach your tattoo, uh, being methodical, detail-oriented all the way through. Yeah, we talked about this. We will get to it. We talked about this uh, during the, the session that, that we have that you gave yeah. me about the, the blueprint. Yeah. Right. There it is. Um, so how did you get... How does your passion, because you need to have some passion to do something like this, otherwise you can't really go through. Where does your passion for finances come from? How did that, how was that born? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I was also thinking, you know, like a lot of people listening to this probably don't know me from a hole in the wall. Um, so, I, you know, I could give a little, I'll, 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 I'll share, I think in sharing how and why I'm passionate about it, it, it all ties into tattooing. Um. So I started my own private studio in 2016 and it was just a me, myself and I operation. I wasn't looking to work with any other artists. Um, and in that I realized, okay, I need to, I need to order all my own supplies. I need to figure out what I'm doing with taxes. And I remember thinking like, I need to figure out what I'm doing with retirement because I can't just keep tattooing forever. Uh, I, I need to think about this sooner than later. And so I got uh, set up with a, a financial advisor through my parents. It was someone that worked, uh, my mom is a painter and she worked for like this mural company. And anyway, it was uh, the guy that she was working with. And um, 
I, he gave me some advice that I then being the inquisitive person I am went and did my own research and I actually didn't agree with him. Now he was a very experienced financial advisor. He was primarily known apparently for like working with doctors and lawyers. So, you know, not tattoo artists. And the advice he gave me was probably great for doctors and lawyers, but it wasn't great for tattooers. And so it, it was just this, like, I hated that feeling of that. I was being given incorrect information uh, when it came to my money, because my money, you know, you, you could say what you want, but it, it is an expression of your life, right? You, you trade your life, you trade your time, your energy for this thing we call money. And then you use your money as an expression of yourself in the way you spend it, save it, use it, whatever, right? So it just felt very personal that I was getting this like incorrect advice. And I I just kind of like went down the rabbit hole of investing, personal finance, managing money, running a business, taxes, started taking courses, started reading books. And I can't tell you when it happened, but there was like a turning point where I I got passionate about it. I felt, my wife will tell you, like there was like a three month period time where I was researching, uh, should I be have a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA? And I was, it was like on my mind, it was this obsession, the same kind of obsession you get about tattooing, right? That makes you a great tattoo artist. And um, so I started talking to my clients, like, what are you doing? How are you, you know, I had a lot of artists and creative people. They didn't know, they were as clueless as I was. And I, I, I just, I just realized that that was coming up a lot in conversations. I actually was getting clients emailing me saying, can't wait for our second session, looking forward to talking more about finances. And that was interesting. I was like, wow, they're looking forward to their tattoo, but they're also stoked on the conversations we're having around money. They're excited about it. I think people should be excited about conversations about money. It's a pretty important topic. And then COVID hit. And I had to shut down my tattoo studio. And I just thought, you know, uh, there's a lot of people hurting right now. There's a lot of businesses. Friends of mine had to close down their tattoo studios and um, people are struggling with this. I, at the time, had a six-month emergency savings. I owned an investment property. I had retirement accounts, investment accounts. I, You know, I was stressed about money, but I knew I didn't really have to be because I'd set myself up. And I decided it kind of was on my mind for a while, but I'm going to pursue financial coaching. I think this is something the world needs. It's something I enjoy. I'm passionate about. I want to help people. And so that was sort of the, the beginning of me moving into the world of finance. Now I was still tattooing full-time after COVID and stuff like that, but um, that was the, the turning point. Okay. And where did it go from there? Like, How did you translate into something practical? Yeah, so there's uh, the world of coaching, uh, you know, like uh, life coaching and fitness coaching. Um, I've actually also like worked with lots of coaches or coaching programs in my life. I've probably invested more money into that kind of education and development than anything else that I've invested in. And it's paid off a lot in my life and the way I live my life um, in my art and, and my business. So I took some like certification program to become a financial coach and it gave me like a skeleton to work with. But uh, to be honest, like now where I'm at with it, like almost three years in, I don't use any of that stuff that I learned because it was, it was not, it wasn't fully applicable to, to artists, to irregular income, to a lot of the struggles that, uh, you know, people living the pirate life uh, encounter. And, um, you know, I was just kind of putting the word out to people like, Hey, looking to work with people around finances. I got quite a few people actually interested in just becoming beta clients and helping me learn how to coach. And, um, about a year into that, I realized I needed, I'm, I'm, I'm good at what I do. I am helping people, but I was terrible at marketing myself. I was afraid to use social media, like Instagram, I was like, really afraid of like judgment of like, oh, all these people follow me for my tattoos. If I start talking about money, like what are they going to think? Or, you know, um, and so I, I started working with like a marketing coach uh, who specifically helps coaches uh, 
yeah, market themselves, get their message clear, uh, narrow down their niche and their message. And that was a really transformative process for me. And it, it helped me stand in the identity of a financial coach. I don't know if you had this experience. I definitely remember like early on in tattooing, there's like a period where I am tattooing. I am an artist. I'm technically a tattoo artist, but like even saying I'm a tattoo artist, like felt like uh, some imposter syndrome or something. And then eventually it was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm a tattoo artist. Like that's just the identity that I have, the way I know myself to be. Um, so it took a while for that to happen around financial coaching. Um, also, I was pursuing a, a license to become a financial advisor, an investment advisor. And um, you you need to pass this pretty strenuous test. It took me six months. I hired a tutoring service. I failed it one time, but I eventually ended up passing and I, I became registered with a wealth management firm. And so I was coaching and I was, um, you know, that, that also gave me some like... Um, confidence that like I have this accreditation or this license that says I know what I'm talking about. But, um, and so I was helping artists, tattooers and all kinds of artists. I, I worked with dancers and other sort of photographers, creatives, opening up retirement accounts, um, you know, doing that kind of stuff, educating them about investing in finance. But the, the coaching element, the relationship with money, the psychological and the spiritual relationship with money was, in my opinion, so much more important than the investment stuff. Because knowing how to invest your money doesn't do you much good if you don't know how to save or relate to money in a, an empowering and confident way. So I ended up leaving the firm unregistering after doing all this work to become this licensed financial advisor. Uh, and now I just do coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one and group coaching and through sharing, you know, value online on social media, I wanted to share content that really people could use for free and just give them the information. And then if they needed help with it, then I can help you. So, you know, again, it's like this little bit by little bit. Uh, now I'm at the point where this is what I do full time. I tattoo like once a month only because I enjoy tattooing and I have a lot of people who are still trying to get tattoos for me. So, um, that's, that's kind of where I'm at now. And now I'm, you know, teaching dozens of tattooers. I just finished, wrapped up a course, uh, called pirate to professional with 20 tattoo artists, uh, helping them build a system for managing their money and, and also delving a little bit into mindset and investing and in, in future stuff. But most of it was like, how do we, manage irregular income in a way that serves us both now and 10, 20, 30 years from now. Yeah. You know, you touched so many aspects that I could ask you like 20 questions right now. So <laughs> I'm going to try to narrow it down because it's sure. really, um, I would say that first of all, it's interesting how you, you know, you focus, this is just a reflection. Yeah. Um, how you decided or not even decided because it's almost like an unconscious uh, path that you take, right? You almost end up there because let's not yeah. say you're supposed to, but kind of, right? And I, I like to think about that in terms of how is, uh, okay, how can you have the most impact on people on this world or whatever with the means that you have? And perhaps the financial route allows you to have a bigger impact on people's life than tattooing, you know, even if it's different. One thing that is really interesting is, you know, when you talked about mindset, which to me is sometimes is, is the most important thing because, uh, uh, because of a personal journey and as well, my experience with other people and with other, with clients and with, uh, you know, other artists, I see that the beliefs that you carry by yourself uh, affect everything you do, the way you see things, the way you, what you put out in the world in, in, in terms of actions, words, thoughts, deeds, that kind of stuff. So when it comes to, for example, you mentioned imposter syndrome, which I, I've seen that in more than a hundred people that I, I gave seminars to, this is one of the things that come up the most because I have one section of these seminars that is called mindset 
where I address specifically how to deal with certain feelings and emotion, which might affect your painting more than the material you use. Mm-hmm. And I think I think this is true for relationship, for money, for everything, really, right? So if you have a good car, but the pilot is not very good, you're not going to go very far. So when it comes to money, very true. I have seen this when we did, uh, just to recap a little bit for, for the audience, um, for the listeners. Uh, I've taken, uh, let's say, an introductory session with you uh, like a week or two ago, just to see, to get a feeling of what you do, right? And I got to say that, do you call the section uh, financial clarity, something like this, right? Yeah. So that's, uh, it's called the financial clarity session. It's a free session that I offer to people to help them get very clear. I look at it as like, we're shining a light on something that we don't often shine a light on. We don't always have these types of conversations about money where we shine a light on where are you right now and get very clear on your current financial and life situation. Then we look at, well, where do you want to be? What are your goals for the future? You want to buy a house? You want to start a business? You want to retire comfortably? And then I look at it as like two points on a map. And then what's the quickest and easiest route that will get you from here to there with the least amount of stress? Uh, And so that's the purpose of the call to just get where you are, where you want to be, and what is it that you need that's going to get you there? Uh, And then if I can help you with that, we can talk about that afterwards. But Really, I just want to help you see what it is that you need. Yeah. And I think that that name couldn't be more spot on because, you know, let me be honest. Um, I didn't know you uh, before, right? So then we got in touch. We talked about this and I said, okay, let's have an introductory session. So let's see what you're doing is about. And and as I said, I don't think you could have a a, a term that is more spot on because the, the brief session that we had, uh, was really about clarity, meaning that it's not just, oh, okay, you have 10, then you take three and you put it here and it give you six, you know? Mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm. really, I, I like your approach because I, I, I think we're like-minded on certain things. And Absolutely. I see that how this translates in the way you do your thing, where when you talk with people about, you know, their financial situation at first to assess the, where they're at and where they want to be, you really uh, try uh, to shine a light about how they feel about money, how they manage their money until now. And you know, as an insider, that tattooers often uh, are quite a disaster when it comes to that, <laughs> you, know? you know, because there is all I, this. I was this, too. I, you know. I very much so. So you know exactly um, how it is from, from being one of, you know, yeah. your, your customers. And um but regardless of where you put your money, what you do with it is how you feel about it. And uh, by removing those blocks, like you said before, the, the imposter syndrome of I tattoo, but I don't feel like a tattooer, right? That's mm-hmm. something you need to address that goes deeper. So when we talked about this, you know, I realized that I had my own issues with money because of my family history and my personal journey. And it clicks, it makes something click in your head, you know, and eventually, even if it's stuff that rationally or logically, you know it already, you know, because it's stuff that I talk about all the time, but you know how it is. You're very good at giving advices to other people. And sometimes you don't see that for yourself. Right. So sometimes you need to hear this or you need to be reminded of this. So that brief session really put things into a different light for me where I said, ah, okay. Uh, Like you mentioned, okay, how much do you want to make per year? And you give a number and then you say, why no more? You know, and you realize, okay, why do I feel like I, I don't uh, deserve to own more? And then, you know, and when you remove these blocks, then you unleash the potential because like, ah, okay, I do deserve this. You know, there is nothing wrong with me, you know, wanting that. And, and that really starts the process. And uh, so after having this session, again, I didn't know you before. So I looked at this very objectively and I said, you know what, there is... Uh, a big value in, I think, what you offer and what you do, because uh, it's not just uh, an investment advice journey. Take three, put there, it's going to give you six. It's kind of like redesigning your whole personality and your whole understanding of your relationship with money. And everything yeah. else that come after, it's, it's a sub-product, but 
I think it's a, it's almost like a healing journey, you know? So that's, that's the thing I just wanted to say that I like the most of this brief, like 40 minutes or something talk, you know, it was very profound. Right. I am so glad to hear that that was your experience. And I know you're, you have no reason to uh, invent that. Uh, like you said, you were, came in purely objectively. You didn't know me from any other tattoo artist in the world. We had brief messaging over Instagram. Um, I, I, sometimes said I, I trick people into getting life coaching by telling them I'm going to give them financial coaching. Um, because after we get the numbers and there's a lot of practical stuff that I work with people and there is the take three and get 10 and there is that element. It's very valuable. But once we get that settled is how do we shift your whole perspective about yourself, your worth, your work and your life? How does it all fit together? Uh, and, and in a way that works for you and everyone around you, again, both now and in the future. And let me ask you, what is the thing that, let's say, what is the obstacle or the problem or the issue that you encounter the most with people when it comes to dealing with money and, and practically after that, saving and building a future or, you know? Yeah, if I could narrow it down. Um, well. It's, a, it's actually a pretty big question, but I'll try to narrow it. So we all, if you think about um, uh, you, you're born and you learn whatever you learn from your parents, from your teachers, from your mentors, from your friends, your social circles, you don't have a single original idea about money, right? You just, you inherit ideas about money from other people who inherited ideas about money from other people. And a lot of the time, those thoughts, those ideas, those perspectives are fear-based ideas about money. That's what I've seen, uh, which causes people to sort of what I call the ostrich approach to money, where they're just like, and that's that's how they deal with money. They're they're hoping it works out, but I'm just gonna like kind of put my head in the ground and you know hope it works itself out eventually. Um, and that's from from fear. If you were afraid of something, that's how you would approach it. So when we shine that light and get clear, we realize, oh, there's no boogeyman under here. It's actually okay to talk about money. It's uh, okay to ask questions. Um, and that is so empowering. The, the rest of it falls into place in my experience. And, and again, you, you asked me where I started with all this. Um, really, I could say it started in my early 20s I was in a, a course uh, with this program called Landmark Education, the Landmark Forum. Um, I had done a lot of work with them. Um, and the question came up that was like, what is your relationship with money? What do, you, what do you believe money is? And I told the coach I was working with, I said, money is the root of all evil. Everything bad in the earth, every painful suffering moment that anyone ever experiences can be traced back to money as being the cause of that. And I also believe that I need more money to be happy. So I had this very hypocritical view of money. And therefore, that gave me my approach to money. And that wasn't working for me. It wasn't working for anyone. Given what I wanted to be up to in my life, I wanted to have a big impact on other people in a positive way. And I just clearly saw that that, that came from a place of fear. And so that was limiting what was possible. So again, to... If you really just say, what's at the core of the problem that people are facing our money? I think the world is facing a very fear-based conversation about money. And so then we, our actions are consistent with that fear-based mentality. Okay. And um, the, okay, so where do you start when you run these programs with people, right? So we gave a little introduction on how you approach this, but so you have this free uh, assessment session where you kind of yeah. try to shine some light on the current situation and on the potential on the per of the person, right? Yeah. And where does it go from there? From there, um, you know, we decide to work together and usually like my, my initial where I start with people is uh, I want to get, a sense of what their actual system is. So when money comes into your life, where's the next place it go? What's the next thing? And sort of like look at the journey money takes already in your life. 
Uh, you could view it like if you, you know, put a marble into one of those shoots, right? Like, where does it go? What does it do? And often what we find is it, it comes into our bank account or it comes into our pocket and then it just randomly shoots out into any number of a thousand different directions. So that's not going to uh, work. It's almost like a, you know, a river or something and the water is just going all over the place. So now I want to build a foundation uh, and I use a, a system of multiple bank accounts and we, we create the foundation. So the first thing I do is just have someone open up the accounts, link the ones they need to link and get it built, but it's not doing anything yet. It's not actually channeling energy, money through their life. And I, I view money as just this flow of energy. Um, so then we say, okay, first thing, especially for tattooers is taxes. Let's get that money. Let's separate taxes from the rest of the pool of energy because it's ultimately not our energy. It's not, it belongs somewhere else. Now there's all kinds of ways to reduce your tax burden and stuff like that. And I get into that with people, but uh, that's number one. So let's channel energy there. Then let's look at your life and let's look at what are your basic needs, your living expenses that, you know, tattooing can be seasonal. But I find that there's certain expenses in your life, your rent, your utilities, your food, subscriptions to Netflix, that kind of stuff, or whether it's December or it's August or whatever month of the year, those are the same every single month. So while your income might fluctuate, you're going to pay your rent every month, right? You're going to pay your utilities. So let's actually separate that money into its own pool, its own energy pool, and then automate that. Okay, so now we've simplified your life. We've simplified taxes. We've simplified living expenses. Now it's clear when you have all your money sitting in one pool, it's not clear, well, what's, what do I need for rent? What do I need for this? So all of this is about simplifying and clarifying. Um, and sometimes simplifying, uh, you know, you think, oh, I, all these bank accounts, that sounds complicated. It's less complicated than having all your money sitting in one account, not really sure where it's supposed to go. So after we've clarified all that, then we look, okay, you need to save, you need to pay yourself first before you pay everything else. And the way we do that is we set up another account where we automate a, a, a savings and I have ways of making it difficult for you to access your own money. And this is the trick because, and this is the secret. All right, I'm gonna admit something to everyone. This is not what you want your financial advisor, your financial coach to admit. I am bad at managing my own money and I'm good at building a system that manages it for me. And that's the key is I'm not going to all of a sudden become amazing at managing money, but if I have a system that's good at managing it for me, then I don't have to be. And by making it a little bit more, making it easier to save money and a little bit more difficult to touch my savings than it is to spend my money, we're our human being, our, our human nature is sort of always going to go with the path of least resistance. So uh, that's kind of like part of the secret sauce in all this is like, let's make it easier to do the right thing with your money than it is to do the wrong thing. And then once you, I call that the, the, the foundation, the savings, taxes, and living expenses. After you have that foundation running in your life and you've balanced the numbers because you know, we're talking about like weekly transfers of money and you're earning a regular income. So it can get a little, a little wonky. Um, I have ways of uh, helping you adjust and balance over time. Then everything else that you want to do becomes possible on top of that foundation. If you were to build a large skyscraper, right, you would need a solid foundation before you could build a 40, 50, 60 story structure. So that's how I look about that's how I look at money is let's get your foundation solid. And then from there, we can add on a retirement account. We can add on a, a savings account for a house. We can start saving for vacations or travel. We can start channeling the money where it needs to go automatically so that you don't have to do it. So that's the first thing that I, I do with people. Yeah, because that's something you mentioned last time as well. It, it's a lot about the system. Because we talked about this where once you have a successful system, which I like to call the blueprint, but it doesn't matter, just words. Yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's a process. Uh, it, it's an analytical, mm, rational, 
optimized process that then doesn't matter what you apply to, then then it works. That's that's yeah. the reason why when you when you think about rich people and very successful entrepreneurs, then they get into a whole new line of business. But they're like, you know, that they they become very successful at that without such a previous specific experience just because they have this system that works and it's kind of yeah. a little similar. we we also you know wealthy people and people in general we our our culture is so focused on how do i increase my income and so there are people that are earning multiple six figures but their net worth is actually close to zero or even negative because they've borrowed too much money earning money if we just focus on that we will that's not the whole picture it's not the whole equation. Um, so we need to also understand how our money is getting managed in a healthy way so that when we do increase our income, and I actually believe, in, and in my experience, because the system uh, is automated and I have to make sure every week I need a certain amount in these accounts so that it functions, it naturally sort of on a subconscious level forces me to increase my income. So all of a sudden it's like... Um, if you have a plant in a pot and it can only grow as big as the pot will allow, all of a sudden my money in my life exists in this bigger pot and it needs to expand and grow. Uh, and um, it, it helped me break through income barriers where you know earning six figures was like nearly impossible. And all of a sudden, like that was nothing, you know? And now I'm seeing how I can create more resources in, in multiple avenues of, uh, of income. Um, but it's, it's all because the foundation of the system allowed me to do that. And I'll, and the, then the other interesting part, so that's the, that's the first thing I do, right. Is help build the system. But in that process, stuff starts bubbling to the surface of your relationship with money, your resistance to money, your, um, you know, attachment to certain things or your, you know, you're familiar with the way you've been doing it. And now all of a sudden I'm inviting you into unfamiliar territory and what's going to come to the surface is all of your blocks around money. And so then we get to talk about it. So building the system, right? I, I don't have no problem telling everyone how the system works on this or anywhere online because it's actually not just if you started to build your own system and you didn't have my help, it would, it would be helpful, but it wouldn't actually solve your whole problem around money. I work through these emotional and spiritual blocks that come up for people. And that's where I find the biggest value in my work comes through. And I, I think anyone I've worked with would attest to that, um, that that's where the real, the value is, is in changing your whole perspective and relationship with money through unblocking the, these channels. Yeah. And that's what we started with. And I, uh, even if I haven't taken your full program, but I, I believe it hundred percent because I see that's the kind of a setup that you start with. And I think that's the most valuable thing you can do because you basically, you, you know, like we talked about this last time, you know, you give a fish to someone, you feed them for a day, but you teach them how to fish, you feed, you know, you feed them for life. So that's kind of like what you're doing. So you change this negative self-belief of either I can do it or I do not deserve to do it. And it's the same thing with when people subconsciously maybe they're even aware of it they're like oh i don't deserve to be happy and they self-sabotage mm -hmm. themselves even if on the surface they're very confident and they project this image but then inside you have these self-destructive behaviors that go on in different ways it's kind of it's pretty much the same thing so i think that's the that's the most valuable uh, aspect of this journey because it's not just like we said you learn where to put your money you learn how to look into yourself with this sort of uh, excuse, you know, like, oh, we're dealing with money, you know, but it could be with other things, you know, but we're just- It's all related. Again, back to the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. The yeah. way you sweep the shop has a lot to do with how you pull lines. And you can argue with me if you want, but I, that's what I believe. I choose to believe that. I'm not even saying that's the truth. I choose to believe that uh, because it's empowered me in my life. So again, the way I do money, and, and again, the whole motivation, right? For me to get solid around my finances, I just wanted a tattoo. I just wanted the taxes and the retirement. I wanted it all to leave me the hell alone so that I could be free to be in my studio, mentally present, spiritually present uh, to create art. That was my main motivation. 
And then something kind of took over. And, uh, and I, I'm an artist at my core, uh, whether I'm expressing my creativity through tattooing or through the work that I do financially, I am a creative artist and I, I bring that artist's mind and perspective. And I think that's what's missing in the world of finance. Like you said, you can go to your accountant, or your financial advisor, and they'll say, well, you just take 10 and put three here and move it there. And then boom, you're good. And that doesn't help people. If it helped people, the world would look very different, right? If it actually worked, but it doesn't. So that's why I'm bringing a, a very different a, approach, a holistic approach. Let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the conversations we're having about money. Let's tweak our goals so that they really inspire us uh, rather than sometimes I'll, I have a conversation like we had about um, goals, right? In, in the talk and people will tell me what they don't want. They're like, I don't want to be in debt. I don't want to be tattooing when I'm 55 years old. Uh, you know, I don't want to be stressed about money. Those are their goals. Their goals are what they don't want. They're not actually focused on what they do want. Their North Star that's guiding them in life isn't what their soul wants. It's what their emotions don't want. And so if we adjust that, if we simply just help you create a new North Star that actually moves you in the direction of what you do want, everything else will fall into place. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. It really aligns with, uh, with, with something that I try to live by, which is, you know, everything either comes from love or fear. And mm. for example, I talked to friends the, back, back home in Italy and they're still doing the same job after 20 years that they don't like, they hate. And I, I know them for a long time. I know they have skills. You know, they could do like 10 times more than that, but mm -hmm. they're still stuck there because their whole focus is what if I don't find anything else? You know, they're like, okay, you're, you're doing that because of fear, not because of love. I know it sounds hippie and some people will be like, oh, but what if you don't have a choice? But I know them, you know, they're so skilled. They have 30 years of experience in something, let's say cooking or this and that. I'm like, look, I've seen people making 10 times the money you make and they're worth one tenth of you, you know, yeah. it's just that you don't believe it, you know? Um, what would you say has been the best experience so far with clients of yours, with your programming, with your teaching, you know, the feedback that you had and you're like, man, that really was a special day. You know, when I, when I heard this, what would you say? Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, here, uh, just a few things coming to thought. So like, one I want to say is like uh, the imposter syndrome still comes up for me sometimes, often uh, right before I'm about to meet with one of my one-on-one -on -one clients or lead a course, like right before the session, sometimes this thing will pop to the surface of like, are you really going to be able to help them? Or so? I don't know why, you know, it's just like, it's still there. It's interesting. Um, and then I have the session, something magical often occurs almost every time. And then I always ask at the end of every call with my my one-on-one -on -one clients, I say, what was the most valuable part of our conversation today? And this helps them really identify what did they get? What was the most valuable part? And when I hear people say that they feel like 50 pounds has been lifted off their shoulders because of our conversation, of one conversation, and then we're working together for three or four months, um, like it's that that is like the biggest, um, for me, the impact is just that, that feeling. Now I can get into practical, like, you know, increasing, uh, your savings rate or, you know, uh, how much money you save, like all that stuff happens. But when I hear that feedback from clients, that is for me, like the, that's all I want to do for people. I want to remove the weight off your shoulders of money so that you're free to be yourself in your life. Yeah, because like you said, often it's it's a burden. It's not even, you know, an obsession like, oh, because I'm obsessed on making more money. Just this weight that you carry, like, oh, this fear. That, oh, am I going to make it? Or what happened if, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, wh whether you like it or not, we, we think about money all the time. Whether we're free, afraid or we're loving it or we're nurturing it or we're running from it, like we do. Our, our world's kind of just designed to be that way. I just don't resist that. I'm just like, okay, well, that's the way it is. I could be mad about that. I could say money's the root of all evil and get all pissed about it. But I, I think this is just a more useful uh, way, a more skillful way 
to approach it. Yep. And uh, so what's, uh, what's cooking? You said that you have this uh, program that you're running uh, yeah. from pirate to professional. And you said that you're working on the next version and stuff like that. What's, uh, what's next? Yeah. So um, I, I, you know, I've been on this path now since March of 2020. It was like, I'm, you know, shut down my studio. I'm going to become a coach. And it was very slow for a long time. And I think this is something a lot of entrepreneurs, even, you know, whether you're a tattooer or whatever you're, there's a time where you're putting in 10 units of energy and you're getting back zero. And then you're putting in 10 and then you're getting back one, right? And then eventually there's like a tipping point. And so the past year is where I've realized the, the all the fruits of the labor uh, have started to sort of bloom in my life. And I started signing on a lot of one-on-one clients, mostly tattoo artists. Um, but like I said, I've, I've worked, I've worked with W2 employees. I have people that worked in advertising and, uh, all sorts of, uh, technology, different fields. And cause the same rules apply really. I mean, I'm, I specialize in a regular income and artists, but the same rules can apply to anything. So my one-on-one roster got real busy and all of a sudden I'm signing on clients for like two months from now. I'm like, we can't even start working together for at least two months, but if you want to put down a deposit, we can do that. And they're like, yes, let's do it. I'm like, okay. So then I'm like, all right, I need to, I need to help more. I can't keep doing one-on-one in this way. So then I started the pirate to professional course for tattoo artists since the majority of my clients are tattooers. And, um, that sold out in about nine days, uh, I had 20 tattoo artists sign up for this course and they're all in different levels. Some of them are, as I like to say, completely on the pirate ship and have been for years. And others are like, really got a lot of pieces together. They just haven't dialed it in, in a way that really works for them. So that's just wrapped up this week. I think we have one more session on S corporations, uh, exciting stuff, uh, tomorrow. But now I'm like, okay, well, how do I, I can't, I can't keep taking one-on-one, but the value of the one-on-one is actually so much more powerful than uh, the six week course that I did. So Pirate to Professionals now going to become P2P 2.0 in October. Uh, and I'm going to start a four month coaching program, uh, group coaching program where It has all the great elements of building the system and helping you structure that so that it works in your life because that's what everyone got out of the six weeks, you know, but uh, then looking at, okay, now let's talk about retirement and what do you actually need to start saving? How, how can I educate you about investing in a way that I'm not telling you what to do? Because again, I'm not no longer an investment advisor legally. But uh, I can guide you to how to work with a financial advisor in a way that does serve you. Again, you're not going to work with like the guy that told me that misinformation. Um, We're going to look at how do you buy a house? What does someone earning a regular income, self-employed, need to think about? Because, you know, things like buying a house take uh, years to prepare for, uh, getting your, your ducks in a row. Um, So really, this course is going to have the foundational stuff that I love teaching tied in with the long-term financial planning. I am teamed up with an accountant, uh, my accountant, Sue. She's phenomenal. She's like a yoga instructor, accountant. She's been doing accounting for 30 plus years. She's kind of teaming up with me and uh, you know, we teach bookkeeping, taxes. So it's a, it's a whole transformation. You cannot spend, you spent 40 minutes with me and you're probably never gonna be the same person about money ever again. Would you agree? I do. If you spend four months with me, your whole life will be different. And so that's really what I want to offer. That's what I think I, the world needs. And um, from the way you transact and deal with the minutia, the day-to-day stuff, to the way you see money, to your goals, to your future long-term planning, all of that's going to be uh, taught in one course. Awesome. And let's say people, you know, would like to reach out, would like to know more, would like to join your program, would like to, you know, take this journey. How would I do that? Uh, I try to make it as easy as possible. Just shoot me a DM on Instagram. Like that's the easiest way. Just Ryan Roy, R-O-I, tattoo, uh, R-Y-A-N, R-O-I, T-A-T-T-O-O on Instagram. And just shoot me a DM. I'm pretty active in there. Uh, 
you know, you can email me. I, my, my company is called the artful dollar. So you can go to the artful dollar.com. You can apply for the clarity session that we did. You can um, book one of those on that on my website. Um, so yeah, any, any way that you want to reach out, uh, is great. Awesome. Ryan, this was a pleasure. I think that, uh, you know, the, the thing that I'm trying to do with this podcast, apart from entertaining, is to deliver some volume. And I believe that, you know, what you're doing and giving you a voice is definitely delivering a value to people that struggle with money or simply don't know where to go. You know, they have the meanings, they have the skills, they have the, but they don't know, they don't have a direction. So, yeah. That, cool. So, yeah. Thank you so Thanks much for, for being having here. me on the call. I, I, it's been great. Amazing. I can't wait to see you uh, in a few months where you yeah, will be. Yeah, I'm actually going to be, uh, I don't know if anyone hearing this is going to be at the Explorer Tattoo Expo in Indiana uh, next week. I'll, I'll be there hanging out. Um, you may even hear me talk about something. Um, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I, I'm excited to uh, do more bigger, you know, things with this. This is, this is just the beginning because so many people need and want this. Um, and I, I could leave like with one last message for people because we've been talking about fear and I had this amazing session with one of my clients the other day. Um, and we were talking about something I call the fear barrier. So, uh, we all experience that there's this resistance when we come up against something that is unfamiliar, uncomfortable, right? Getting out of your comfort zone. And I, I call that the fear barrier. We're, we're coming up against something and we feel a little scared and money can uh, bring this up. And so often we retreat from the fear barrier. We, our natural human instinct is to move away from the fire. And I'm inviting people to take a breath, acknowledge that, uh, okay, I'm experiencing this fear barrier and listen to your gut, like listen to your soul. It will guide you and it will help you lean gently into it. I'm not saying you got to dive in, but gently lean into it. Stay in that uncomfortable place. You will learn more from that than from any course, any college education, anything, anywhere. The real education is getting a little bit more comfortable inside and moving into the fear barrier amazing amazing right thank you for this last gem uh i, I couldn't agree more awesome I'm a, amazing as i said I, I i look forward to see what you're going to do in the future because i know i have a sense uh, you know i met people around the world and and i know that people like you have always stuff bubbling you know so i'm mm -hmm. sure that you know this piece will come together and they will give birth to something else, you know, the 3.0 and a 7.0, you know, and you will find <laughs> different ways, you know, to, to impact. So I look forward cool. to see that. Yeah. And so I look forward to having you in one of my courses one day. I'm sure it'll happen. Definitely. Definitely. Dude, thank you so much. All Fantastic. right. Awesome. Have a good yeah. day, bro. Later. Bye. Bye.